Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be running Steam Deck OS, otherwise known as Steam OS 3 or Hollow ISO on the world's smallest Ryzen powered single board computer. This is known as the DFI GHF51. They have a couple different variants, but yeah, I mean, as you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny and we've got a real Ryzen APU built in here with this single board computer. It's a fully functional PC and a super small form factor. And just to give you an idea of the size, here it is beside the Raspberry Pi 4, and it's actually a bit smaller than the Raspberry Pi 4, and it's putting out a lot more performance than the ARM chip in that Pi 4 can. So in this video, I've installed SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. I'm using Hollow ISO to get this up and running, and we're going to be testing out some games and just overall performance on this SBC. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Ugreen and their new lineup of Nexo desktop chargers. They offer a 100 watt and a 65 watt, and I've actually been using these Ugreen chargers for a while now. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know we've got a lot of handhelds and devices that need a good charger, and these Ugreen desktop chargers definitely get the job done. My go-to is the 100 watt Nexode and my favorite thing about the desktop versions is we've got a lead from the wall so we don't have to worry about long USB cables. I've got three devices plugged in here and this is a high-end gaming phone. It'll charge it up to 65 watts but remember this is a 100 watt charger and it does a true 100 watt so right now, from the wall, pulling 100 watts, charging all three of these. But if you've got a device that does support 100 watt PD quick charging, it'll do it directly from that top port. Here we are with the AOK Zoe handheld, and while I'm running a benchmark right now, you can see it jump up to around 90 watts. So this will do a true 100 watt output out of a single port, and in fact, the top two ports are 100 watt rated, but mixing it up does take it down, because in total, we can do 100 watts with this. So for instance, if we had both top ports plugged in, the very top would do 65, the second port would do 30, and so on and so on. So in total, we've got three USB-C ports and one full-size USB that'll do 22.5 watts max. So if you're in the market for a new charger, definitely have a look at Ugreen's website. I'll leave a link in the description. This single board computer is manufactured for embedded systems. I mean, you can do a ton of stuff with it. You can set up signage, you can control a robot, you can do basically whatever a PC can in a really small form factor here, but it doesn't stop us from running different operating systems on this unit, given that it has an x86 APU. And when it comes to the specs of the GHF51, we've got the AMD Ryzen R1606G. This is an embedded APU two cores, four threads at 2.6 gigahertz. Unfortunately, this chip has been a little nerfed given that we're working with such a small form factor due to heat constraints and power constrictions. We can only go up to 2.6. This can normally go up to 3.5, but it is disabled. This uses a Radeon Vega 3i GPU up to 1200 megahertz. You can pick this up in a couple different variants with four or eight gigabytes of RAM. I've got the four gigabyte model here. This is the only one I could get my hands on and it's running at 2400 megahertz. It's got 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage and this is where I installed my operating system. We're running Hollow ISO. You could run from an external if you wanted to, but we also have two micro HDMI ports and one USB 3.1 port. It also has gigabit ethernet. Now keep in mind, this was never meant to game on, but that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in this video. And in order to get the maximum performance out of this board, I do need a cooling solution. You could go with a custom solution if you wanted to go with an actively cooled heat sink, but I just went with their passively cooled case that they offer. The APU is gonna make contact with that copper plate in turn drawing all of the heat out of this thing. In total, this can pull 22 watts the way I have it set up right now, so we definitely need to keep this thing cool. And once we have it all assembled, it looks something like this. We've got access to all of the external ports, and this runs on 12 volts. We can use a barrel jack with this case here. Unfortunately, it doesn't support PD charging, so we can't use that USB Type-C port to power the board up. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so I've got everything set up. Remember, we've got a micro HDMI on this board here. I've also plugged in this USB hub just so I have a few more USB ports because we've only got one USB Type-C on the front. I've got a mouse and keyboard plugged in just in case I need it, but I'm gonna be using the Steam controller here. I'm using the dongle that comes along with it. And I didn't shut this down properly, but it should get us right into Steam OS 3 or Steam Deck OS. And of course, we've got a low-end system here. Two cores, four threads, we've only got a clock up to 2.6 gigahertz, and Vega 3 graphics. 
but it does have enough power to play older games and indie titles quite well. Plus, we can also stream from another PC using Remote Play right here in SteamOS 3. So like I mentioned, I've got the Steam controller connected, and to tell you the truth, I've had this for about two years. I still haven't been able to get used to the trackpad over on the right-hand side. Have a lot of issues playing uh, first-person shooters and things like that with it, but I'm going to use it throughout the video. And as you can see, I've already installed a bunch of games here. We've only got 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. And if I head over here to settings, we can take a look at the specs just to show you that it is running on this little board. We've got the Ryzen Embedded R1606G, up to 2.6 gigahertz, two cores, four threads, and we've got four gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz. And I've dedicated one of those gigs to VRAM. You can do it from the BIOS. So we basically have access to everything here that we would on the Steam Deck except for TDP control and manual GPU clock control. From the performance settings, we can enable variable refresh rate. We can also turn on system-wide FSR. But of course, since we're not using the same APU that's in the Steam Deck, we just can't adjust the TDP over here. You can do it from the BIOS. And this thing is running at 22 watts. So that's about as high as I can get this little thing. And that gives us plenty of power here to keep the CPU clocks up to 2.6 gigahertz on both cores and all four threads. Plus, it gives us enough power to keep the maximum GPU clocks up on that Vega 3i GPU. So uh, the first game I'm going to be testing here is Dirt 3. This is not Steam Deck verified, but it does work quite well in SteamOS 3. So I've turned the FPS cap off just to see what we could do here, and we're averaging around 74 FPS. Medium settings, 720p, not bad for a little single board computer like this, but of course it's definitely an older game. And that's really what we're going to have to stick to on something like this. We don't have enough VRAM to really run something like God of War or even The Witcher 3 on this board. There is an 8GB version of this thing out there, but you know, even adding a little more VRAM here, we're just not going to have the power to run those AAA games. We could probably do 25 FPS, very low settings on something like The Witcher 3. Next up, Left 4 Dead 2, medium settings, 720p. Every once in a while, I will see it kind of fluctuate there. It gives me a little bit of a stutter. And I'm going to chalk this up to, you know, using Proton here. Plus, we've got the frame rate uncapped here. If we just locked it at 60, that CPU and GPU doesn't have to work so hard, so we'd get a much smoother experience. It will run this at a constant 60 all day. Here's Skyrim, and going into this, I was really hoping we could get a nice steady 60 out of it. 720p, low settings, but as you see, we're dipping under 60 there, and it really comes down to that CPU power. If this little chip would boost up to 3 gigahertz, I think we could definitely keep this at 60. You might notice I've got a little fan on top of the case, and this was just kind of an experiment that I did. I'm not sure how they have this set up in the BIOS for thermal throttling. It's probably at around 90 degrees Celsius, but I never saw it hit 80. I was just kind of interested to see if we could up the performance, and you know, since we're under that threshold, really doesn't help out. And of course I had to test out Half-Life 2, 1080p, medium settings, we're getting an average over 100 FPS, which is really good, but again, all of these games that I tested are old, and it really comes down to the power this thing's putting out. Now when it comes to indie games, I tested Cuphead, Sonic Mania, and Dead Cells. All three of those games ran at full speed. So obviously, we're not working with a lot of power here, so we're not going to be able to run something like Cyberpunk 2077 or uh, Spider-Man Remastered, Spider-Man Miles Morales, but we can set up remote play quite easily on this machine, so you can stream from your higher-end PC. I've got this connected to the same network in my house. I'm going to be streaming from my main gaming PC. And we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales. Remember, all the hard work is being done on my other PC. This is just a low-powered unit to kind of stream it to. And the way I've got everything set up is my main gaming PC is connected to Ethernet. So is this thing here. So there's really no latency there. I mean, it's very, very minimal. It really does feel like you're playing on this little machine here. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's a pretty cool little experiment. This is something I've been wanting to do for a little while now. I mean, it's definitely a super small single board computer powered by Ryzen. And since we're using Ryzen, it's really easy to get SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS or Hollow ISO up and running on a little board like this. Now, obviously, I wouldn't run out and buy this board specifically for SteamOS 3, but it's pretty cool to see that we can install it and have a functioning system. That's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more about this board, I'll leave some links in the description. And, you know, if there's anything else you want to see running on this or if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. 
And like always, thanks for watching.